people of the internet. This right here is a Jasmine acoustic guitar. I'm currently staying inside of the city, away from my house, and uh, I wanted a guitar. I'm going to be here for a while, so I went ahead and I ordered it. This is just a cheapo, uh, oh, what would you call it? Cheapo starter guitar, I guess? So, I figured, let's go ahead and do an unboxing. I only have my phone camera here with me today, so the quality is not going to be all that great. I do have a cheapo Amazon bought camera stand that we'll use here in a second. But for right now, let's go ahead and unbox this thing. So, I don't have a camera stand, that's why it's all jiggly. What can I use around here to unbox this thing, though? Let's see, well, uh, this might work. <sighs> nope, that probably won't work. Uh, this one. Nope, still boxed. How about this one? Nope, still boxed. What do we have here? Ah! This will probably work! Nope, still boxed. I guess I gotta put in a little bit more effort than that. Let me move the firearms off of the guitar, I guess. Okay! Oh, I got no idea what to expect with this thing. I've heard mixed things about the Jasmine guitars. I hear that they are fantastic for the price, but then I also hear people say, hey, they're completely unplayable. So let's open this up and find out what we're working with. Oh, fantastic. We got a box inside of a box? Hell yeah. I guess that's just invoice and stuff. Let's move that out of the way. Let's move this out of the way. All that is worthless. What we want is this right here. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and take this box right here and bring it out here, and I'll show you guys why in a second. All right, the box is officially inside of the hallway. Now we wait. <laughs> <laughs> we'll check on that here in a sec. Alright, so it looks like the box internally is not taped down or anything. So we're just going to open this up. That looks like some incredibly thin plastic. It's not really much of a protectant, but at least it's been wrapped up. I wanted specifically to get a cheap guitar that had a truss rod so I could adjust the neck. Because some of your extremely cheap guitars, they don't have truss rods, so the neck just kind of bends and... It's really, uh, really annoying because you end up with a really high action that you can do nothing about. So, this right here, Allen Wrench, for that truss rod. Let's break this thing out. As a matter of fact, I think now that we have it unboxed, I'll go ahead and uh, set up the actual camera stand. Alright, nothing else inside of the box. So, whatever we have is going to be directly inside of this package. Hopefully, you guys can see all right there. This is what we got. Okay, let's see. Rubber band. We can have lots of fun with this rubber band, but that'll be that'll be for later. What else do we have in here? Ah, interesting. So the trash bag on the outside is just an extra layer of protection. It looks like on the inside we have this cheap uh, whatever this thing is called. I see this on these new guitars all the time. Headstock. Headstock looks awesome actually. The paint job on this looked really good. I don't know if this is remove and discard this package cover. I haven't seen this before on a guitar, uh, but taking it off is leaving a lot of residue on this pick guard. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to play with that one and get that off of there because that is just, that is just awful. Ah, okay, I see. This is stuck on the actual plastic on the pick guard itself. Fantastic. So that just comes right off. The color of this guitar I really liked. This is one of the reasons why I bought this particular guitar. Finish on it looks pretty good for the amount of money that you spend. I'm sure if I look closely, which I will here in a second, uh, we'll be able to find all sorts of uh, issues with it. And that's just what you get from guitars at this price point. Really good for uh, the price point, especially considering you know what you could get at this price point 20 years ago. It's got that new guitar smell. We got ourselves a silica packet right there. Okay, so this right here is the guitar. Already I'm noticing that the action is high and the neck is bent forward a little bit. And that's, you know, to, to pretty much be expected. I believe this was shipped here from California. I live in Florida. Uh, humidity is different. The neck's gonna shift. Things are just gonna happen. I'm very doubtful this is in tune. Nope, definitely not in tune. But boy, does it sound good. It is, in fact, making noise. Oh, yeah. That's right. My tuner is on my phone. <laughs> and I'm currently recording with my phone. Let me borrow my phone for a second before I, uh, before I continue this any farther so I can put this thing in a tune. 
and we'll see how it actually plays and sounds. Let me go through it real quick. I notice our bridge uh, looks like we have some glue splotches all over this thing, so that's not very eye appealing. Looks like our bridge nut, I can't remember what they actually call that, it might be called a saddle, but I'm going to call it bridge nut because I'm an amateur guitarist. Uh, the bridge nut is much higher than it's supposed to be. We got all sorts of glue and improper finish along the uh, neck of the guitar right here. The actual frets themselves, as long as they don't cut me, then that should be fine. Yeah, those actually don't feel bad at all. I have 110% felt worse. All right here's our cover for our truss rod, so I'll be able to get in there and bend this neck around. As a matter of fact, I might just straighten out the neck, and uh, we will see if that puts it in tune. Maybe this was in tune whenever it shipped. All right, tuners, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily gauge those to be overly impressive at a guitar of this price point. The actual finish on this guitar is really pretty, though. I really, really like the way that this guitar actually looks. I, I do wish that the pick guard was not on there. I'm pretty sure that this right here is just stuck on like a big sticker, but I don't want to risk peeling it off and then maybe taking some of the finish with it, so that pick or that pick guard is just there to stay. Uh, I don't have a bench grinder or sandpaper or anything like that, so I cannot lower this action by uh, taking care of that nut there. But if you do have a means to do that, as a matter of fact, I might just take that nut off and see how low the action gets and see if this would still be playable. So let me go ahead and fiddle, the, fiddle with this uh, a little bit. I'll tune it up and we'll see what we're looking like. Looks like we have ourselves a cross frame inside of the guitar itself. How do the acoustics sound? Oh god, that smells so bad. It smells like it's 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 horrible. It smells it smells like new guitar. Anyone who's ever smelled a new guitar knows what that would smell like. This right here really does have like the the dirt cheap tuners that you would see on a guitar like this. Let's try moving them around a little bit. Okay. Well, they don't feel particularly sticky. They're moving just fine. I'm currently loosening them so I can uh, get that nut out and we'll see how far that lowers the action. I'm willing to bet that would probably be too low to be playable though. Is it time? Has it happened yet? Nope, not yet. We will wait. Give it time. All right, so now that all of that is done, let's have a look at the guitar itself. I went ahead and I literally just took off the bridge nut or bridge saddle. I'm not sure which one of those it's called. I think it's bridge saddle, but I'm going to keep calling it the bridge nut. And that lowered our action significantly. The truss rod still needs a bit of an adjustment to be pulled forward a little bit because we have a little tiny bit of buzzing on the guitar whenever the fret like rubs on, on some of these deeper strings. So we will have to make some truss rod adjustments. But I don't have a little screwdriver here, so I need to get me a screwdriver so I can take off this little plate right here. I really wish that those were like Allen keys or something like that, and I could use the little truss rod Allen key to be able to access the truss rod. But I simply don't have the means to be able to access the truss rod, so this is just going to have to do for now anyway. All right, the guitar itself, I don't see any real cosmetic issues besides some glue coming out over here where the neck meets the body, which is pretty much uh, what you're going to expect from something like this. The frets are very, very nice. They're not gritty or anything like that. They actually feel really decent. Uh, the guitar itself also looks really, really decent. I don't see any spotting or running or uh, orange peeling with the paint job or anything like that. So I gotta say, I'm, I'm abhorrently impressed with how this thing actually looks. Now on the inside, uh, that's where you can start to see some real issues on the inside along the uh, bracing and whatnot. I see a lot of glue in there. Uh, I doubt that you guys will be able to see that on camera, but I'll still show it to the phone screen because why not? So besides that, the neck feels thinner than what I normally have come to expect from acoustics. Ah, I found a little bit of cosmetic issue right here on the paint job on the neck itself, but that's all right. That doesn't much matter. I like how smooth the neck is. That will make going back and forth really, really easy. I do not know how well the audio is going to pick up because I'm inside of an unair conditioned room and uh, I'm just using my phone for recording, but let's go ahead and get a little bit closer. I'll go ahead and run through some of the sounds of this thing 
and we'll see how it sounds, and we'll talk about my feelings towards it. I, I have no idea how the camera is going to look on this. I'm literally just kind of winging this with the phone camera. But since I have this here, uh, I don't have my actual recording equipment, and I wanted to go ahead and unbox this. So, uh, yeah, this is the very ad hoc makeshift unboxing of this Rogue guitar, because I wanted to unbox it so I could go ahead and play it. Uh, I will have to figure out a uh, truss rod adjustment, get myself a little screwdriver, I'll do that whenever I go to the store later. But for right now, this right here is going to just have to do. So first off, I think we're going to go ahead and just play a couple of chords. I don't have a guitar pick with me. I have literally nothing. I was hoping that this would come with one, but it did not. So right here is just going to be E. Wow, that actually sounds really good. Maybe it's just because I'm inside of a closed room, but the audio projecting off of this thing is phenomenal. Let's hear the difference between E and E minor. Okay. The guitar seems to handle brighter tones better than more monotone ones. I mean, you can still hear that it's an E minor, but the difference isn't nearly as big as what I would hear with some other guitars. Also, my fingernails are quite long. I'm very much not prepared for playing guitar here. Let's go ahead and just try A. Hold on. Let me readjust my fingers here. Try A. There we go. A little bit of a buzz on something here. There we go. That high E, I'm not even touching it, but we do have a bit of a buzz. I imagine that buzz will probably go away whenever I adjust the truss rod, because I'm willing to bet we're just rubbing a fret. But there's our A. Let's do A minor. More significant than the E minor. Here's our A7. I really like the way that sounds. Maybe try something a little higher end. I really like the way that this guitar handles uh, your your higher pitched uh, chords as opposed to uh, your lower pitched ones. It just doesn't have much of a, a solid bass behind it. And uh, although it does produce a lot of sound because of that lack of a solid bass, I'm willing to bet that you're not going to get much in terms of uh, deep sounds from this guitar. Let's go ahead and just, just do some power chord stuff. Okay. Yep, not much going on with the power chord stuff. I know I have a Firefly, which is also a 7 8 uh, inch or a 7 8 size guitar, so uh, it produces much, much better bass than this one does. Yeah, this one right here just does not have the, the depth. As we go into the low E, it just does not produce a lot of sound. And that's what you get for a guitar like this. But whenever we go to, to the A and the D, we start to hear it a lot better. Okay, so definitely have to adjust that truss rod. <laughs> a little bit of a buzz. Oh man, actually I, I could use some whiskey. I'd like to have a buzz like that. I wish I was buzzing like my guitar here. Let's try some stuff a little more on the, uh, the, the higher strings. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to play this one. This is uh, my iteration of Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. I haven't played this one in a long time. But uh, this is not how it's actually played. This is just something that I figured out how to play back whenever I like tried learning myself. I didn't have anything trying to teach me. So let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Okay, so right off the bat, definitely handles the higher strings better than the lower strings, and I'm noticing that the frets are smaller than some of the other acoustics that I have, and just the muscle memory I have going on, is not necessarily panning out all that well, because I catch myself going to different parts of the frets than what I'm supposed to do. And then they go into a G and they start doing the strumming and the, the vocals and the singing. Don't expect me to sing for you guys. So, I gotta say I'm impressed. I think I only paid like $55 for this guitar or something. I'm willing to bet that if I toss in just a few dollars more, they would have sent the picks and all the accessories that you would normally get with a guitar. 
But uh, I opted to go with the absolute cheapest one that I could possibly find. So here's our $55 acoustic here. Let me try something a little bit more upbeat. The strings on this thing absolutely suck. <laughs> like, they they feel like I'm, I'm rubbing on strings that have, like, a lacquer paint sprayed on them. So the strings are terrible. I will absolutely be replacing those. But that's kind of what you get whenever you get a dirt cheap guitar like this. <laughs> It sounds a lot better when maybe we got more bass that can be thrown behind it, but it also doesn't sound bad. Let me try. Let me let me try something a little bit more at the high end, and we'll move down to a. Uh, we're gonna use a, a pentatonic lick here, and we're gonna start off on the high end, and we'll go ahead and we'll move down to the uh, lower, deeper. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. I came up with this one a long time ago. I am noticing that there are some major issues with some fret buzz going on with this thing. And like I said before, that'll readjust whenever I either do the uh, the bridge saddle or adjust the truss rod, which I can do neither of right now. But that's not gonna stop me from playing. It does not sound bad. It does not sound bad. All in all, I would deem it as playable. Let's try, let's try something like this. There we go. I like the way that sounds. Now I'm just kind of at living here. It handles those lower notes really, really well. I like that. All right, all in all, do I like this guitar? Uh, it's very far from the best guitar that I have, but it's playable. I adjust that truss rod just a little bit to kind of pull the neck forward slightly because our action is very, very low. And, uh, well, the neck is a little bit on the bowed side, so it's kind of uh, lower towards the middle, or lower towards the two ends than it is inside of the middle. And that's where adjusting the bridge saddle would uh, help with that. So. Ideally, what I need to do is I need to properly grind down that bridge saddle and then adjust my truss rod so I get myself a nice straight edge, but I just don't have the means to do that right now. So this is the best of what I got, and it's playable as far as I'm concerned, so that right there will work. All right, so is this the greatest guitar that I've ever owned? No, it is not. We got definitely some cosmetic issues of like along the bridge and along where it's been glued and along this right here, and it's definitely not you know, the end-all be-all of guitars by any stretch of the imagination. But I paid like 55 bucks for this thing. And uh, it shipped in just a couple of days. I think I got this particular one off of eBay. Uh, I do wish that the pit guard wasn't there. And I do wish that they did a better job of sticking it on. Because it's not even with the actual sound hole design. So, that's just kind of what you get. Uh, the tuners feel alright. This thing is staying in tune, sort of, well enough. Bear in mind that the strings are still stretching, like this is a brand spanking new guitar. Uh, there's nowhere for, or there's there's no uh, uh, second peg for mounting a sling on it. You do have this little plastic bracket right there. But you need two points of contact, and one of them is just not here. They did not give me a... Uh, a means to be able to mount a, a a guitar sling to this, or I guess a guitar strap. So 
I got no mounting point. I got no sling. I got no strap. Uh, and I'm getting sweat all over this guitar because it's a billion degrees outside. Does it get my stamp approval? Yeah. Yeah, I'd give it my stamp approval for 50 bucks. Uh, definitely not bad. Uh, this reminds me of a Boarswood guitar that I have to where it's not great, but it's also not terrible. At least with this one right here, I did not feel like I was in danger whenever I was tightening these strings. I know some of these cheap guitars, you'll hear like the bridge start to crack and slowly tear itself up. And that's just not the case with this one. So now I got myself a sweet little dirt cheap guitar that I can keep here for whenever I come to the city and I don't have access to my regular guitars. So thanks for watching folks. I do appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share, description below. No, description below has nothing in it because that is what I do on my primary channel, but not on this one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully the audio turned out all right on this and hopefully the visuals are halfway decent. I will see you guys on probably the next episode. Good news, he found it. He found it and he loves it. Oh boy. Well, that box now officially belongs to him. Good work, buddy. You keep it up.